was Marion and Keys one night, and I was getting ready for bed, and she just burst out laughing. And when she told me what it was, I said, no, that can't be true, I said. But I went and Googled it, because that's how I did my research. And sure enough, it was true. And so to tell this story, I had to invent a lady who was A, rich enough to have all these procedures done, and B, who was kind of obsessed with them. So this is called A Cosmetic Procedure Too Far. Vivian Braithwaite St. John Smythe had had three husbands, and none survived. Widowed once, then twice, then twicely. But every time she'd done quite nicely. Mr. Braithwaite had acquired his wealth, investing well in spas for health, and making Braithwaite's pies of pork, and buying well in Cheney Walk. Her second spouse, one Marcus St. John, took remedies of native Indians, and utilising patent law, had made himself a tidy score. Mr. Smythe, the lucky owner of five small wells near our, in Arizona, had left his shares and dividends to his beloved Vivian. So Vivian Braithwaite St. John Smythe now lived a carefree life and blithe, and gave her time and paid a tithe to an orphanage in Rotherhithe. But the rest she spent on staying young. Her youthful look to which she'd clung with more or less obsessive vigour would cause her idle friends to snigger, though jealous of her skin and figure. None of them possessed the rigour to follow Viv's regime. So I asked her the secret of her youthful appearance. She replied it requires the strictest adherence to a diet of crude and the eggs of a sturgeon with the consummate skill of a Harley Street surgeon. And though I'm aware that youth can't be regained, I'm as wealthy as Croesus and incurably vain. So I've tried every lotion and balm to be beautiful. I've taken potions which are not pharmaceutical. My boy, I would pay for fairy dust sprinkles if it reduced by one jot the appearance of wrinkles. I've had my tummy tucked, my buttocks sucked, my legs waxed and my eyebrows plucked. My lips are filled with collagen, my boobs are full of silicon. I've had hot stones and hopey candles, been lightly spanked with Jesus sandals. I've been wrapped in clinton, caked in mud, had extra air put in my blood. There's nothing that I wouldn't try to make me look good till I die. I've even had a coffee blend squirted up the other end. And when I take a new lover, I like to bedazzle with my intimate piercings and my ruby bedazzle. I choked on my drink and said, my, you are bluff. And who'd have supposed such a decorative muff? Yes, Vivian, love, I have to concede you're a slave to the world of cosmetic procedure. How true, she replied, but she can't beat relaxing with a thorough colonic and a bloody good waxing. <laughs> yes, I'm talking Hollywood, not just Brazilian. To suppress pubic growth, I would blow my last million. And at least twice a month, I send Ingrid downstairs to laser the life out of obstinate hairs. I replied that it must be a costly pursuit, this full-blown aversion to neck down her suitness. She said, trust me, dear boy, I have enough spawns to maintain silky smoothness in the region of Mons. And everywhere else, from my chin to my heel, my lovers adore the sensational feel. With even the magnification of Hubble, one would not find a smidgen of whisker or stubble. <laughs> <laughs> and when I inquired what had sparked her obsession, she, wrote, she smiled like a strumpet at midnight confession. When I was 18, I became the au pair for a family who wintered in Val d'Isere. The wife didn't like me, but the husband was keen. He was fond of a peach, but preferred nectarine. <laughs> so from that day to this, with little remorse, I have never let nature decide her own course. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must take my leave. There's one more procedure I have to achieve. One more improvement I have to achieve. So I'm off to see Ingrid. She has a new tincture, especially concocted for bleaching the sphincter. <laughs> I know. As she left, I said nothing. My mouth was ajar. That was surely a cosmetic procedure too far. Thank you. <laughs> I, I can't believe, I, you, I, I hope you appreciate what I'm saying about free market economics here. I think there, there comes a time when the government should, government should step in and say, no, I'm sorry, you're just not having that done. <laughs> it's ridiculous.